now what is the process for filing h1b dependents that would be either your spouse or your children which are less than the age of 21 years and they are unmarried they can also appear for the visa interview simultaneous but if in case they return your passport that means there is some issue and they might issue uh, you a blue or yellow slip hello friends welcome back to the channel that couple abroad hope you all are doing great so if you are someone who wishes to work in usa in future and is interested in applying for h1b visa then you are at the right place today in this video i will talk about various nuances related to the h1b visa what is the process and uh, how basically employer can file for h1b visa and what are the different things you can do on H1B visa and what are the different interesting facts of H1B visa. So let's get started. First of all, you should be clear about what is H1B visa. So H1B visa is a speciality occupation visa. So this is basically applied for those individuals who have proven skills in the speciality occupation which the US employers are looking for. Or you could be working in research and development in the Department of Defense in USA. There are certain merits associated with the H1B visa applicants. So first of all, talking about the H1B visa application. So H1B visa basically allows uh, some of the US employers to hire the skilled foreign workers who have an equivalent of the bachelor degree uh, comparable to that of USA. So what are the requirements for the employers who are going to file uh, for your H-1B visa? So there are basically three uh, basic requirements. First one is uh, that the employer should obtain LCA. LCA is labor condition application from the US Department of Defense. So that basically tells like whether your employer is going to pay you the minimum wage as applicable in US for the other US citizens. Uh, secondly, the employer should be able to prove that uh, for whichever employee he or she is filing the H-1B visa, that should be the speciality occupation. You should have uh, some proven skills to showcase that you are eligible for that speciality occupation. Uh, the third important thing is that there should be a valid employer-employee relationship between the employer who is filing the petition and uh, between the employee whose H-1B petition is being filed and that valid relationship should exist between both the parties for a certain amount of time. So in addition to the employer requirements, there are also certain beneficiary requirements. That means for whom uh, the H-1B visa is being filed, that person should also qualify for certain requirements. The very first being the education. So that means the person for whom the H-1B visa is being filed, he or she should hold an equivalent of a U.S. bachelor's degree in which the H-1B visa for the speciality occupation is being filed for. Nowadays, USCIS is uh, performing a close scrutiny. So that means even if your field is just related to the education that you have uh, like earned, that is also not acceptable. Your field of work should be totally related to the education that you have gained so far. The second requirement being uh, the valid change of status. So let's say you're converting from F1 to H1B visa. So at that point of time, then you should also be able to prove lawfully that uh, the non-immigrant visa status was maintained throughout the period. So now what is the process for filing H1B? Uh, the first step for filing H1B visa is uh, the electronic registration. Uh, so starting 2020, USCIS has basically required people to register electronically. And once the registration is done, then the lottery basically happens. So once you register online, there are certain statuses that are uh, visible on the online portal. So let's see what are the statuses. The very first status is that your registration is successfully done and you are being considered for the lottery selection. The second status is not selected. That means uh, whatever uh, registration process your employer has performed and uh, the USCIS has conducted a preliminary examination and uh, through that examination, your application doesn't seem fit for the H-1B petition. Uh, the third status could be that your uh, registration is invalid. So that could be possible if you have filed multiple applications. In that case, if USCIS finds that the person has applied multiple times, all your applications will be deemed as invalid. Last status could be invalidated failed payments. That means in that case, the registration was successful, but somehow the payment did not went through. In that case, also your application is not considered for the lottery system. Uh, so now as part of H-1B visa process, uh, the very basic question is that person once 
you know admitted on the h1b visa how much time he or she can stay in the us so once you are admitted on h1b visa you can stay at most for 3 years at a time under h1b visa status in some cases this time can be extended up to 3 next years that means a total time of 6 years is applicable for a person to stay in h1b visa in usa so what happens if you leave early from usa while you are still on the h1b if in case your employer terminates you or for some reason sends you back to your home country then the employer is responsible for bearing all the costs for you to return to your native country so the next important question is like what happens to the families on h1b visa so in case you have a dependent family that means you have a spouse you have children under the age of 21 years who are unmarried then you are also eligible to bring them along to the usa but they can only come on the h4 dependent visa so h4 dependent visa means they cannot uh, lawfully you know work here in usa but they can come they can study and there are several things that they are eligible for doing like you know applying for a driver's license applying for credit debit cards opening a joint bank account and they can also study on f1 visa or even on h4 visa so these things i have already covered in a separate video so if you are interested then go and check out uh, those videos on h4 visa continuing with the process once your employer has filed uh, the registration with uscis uh, the registration is filed only annually that means once a year in uh, the month of march and uh, the lottery selection happens in uh, the month of april in the very first week you will be able to get the results whether your name has been selected in the lottery or not so once the lottery uh, selection is done the next step is to file the petition uh, also please note that for the registration only very basic details are required by the employer such as your name your date of birth your passport number your education qualifications so those are the only basic details that are required for registration so once you approach the petition filing process petition filing process requires a uh, far more documentation as compared to the registration process you basically have to give all the documentation to your employer who can further file your petition with uscis uh, so basically the call for filing the petition uh, you know comes somewhere around uh, the month of june or july because uh, like as soon as you get your lottery selection result there are there is a period of around uh, i believe 80 to 90 days for the employer to file your petition so during those 80 to 90 days the employer basically requests you to submit all your required documents and they also uh, basically validate those documents and once the documents seem fine they go and file the petition with the uh, uscis they also get a file number corresponding to the petition file and that file number can also be passed on to you that is the employee so once you get that uh, file number it also represents which service center is basically working on your case so once you have that file number you can also go on to the uscis website and see your case status usually the case status is also uh, you know updated somewhere between 2 uh, to 3 months and uh, i think the maximum it can go to is 6 months so once you have your case status uh, updated in the uscis website and you also get the result from your employer saying like whether your petition has been approved or not and once that is approved you can uh, go on to the next step which is the visa interview process in case your petition is approved and your case status is updated on the uscis uh, website uh, it's good like you can go ahead and you know uh, apply for your visa interview uh, but in case uh, there is some uh, more documentation which is required by uscis to approve your case then they might require for certain evidence which comes under the name of rfe request for more evidence uh, so you need not worry if if in case you get the rfe it's it's nothing like rejection you just have to provide some additional documentation which uh, uscis will go through and if they are satisfied with whatever you have supplied your case will be approved eventually so after the petition approval the next step is to appear for the visa interview so now in at this point of time uh, it's also the time that your dependents that could be either your spouse or your children which are less than the age of 21 years and they are unmarried they can also appear for the visa interview simultaneous uh, so to appear for the visa interview the first step is to basically fill the ds160 form and get the ds160 confirmation without which you cannot go ahead and book your slots for the visa interview once you have filled your ds160 form the next step is to pay the fees for the visa interview so uh, you can go on to the cgi federal website uh, there you can uh, basically pay for your visa interview process and you can also pay simultaneously for your dependent visa as well so once that is done the next step is to book your slots nowadays uh, the slots are not that frequently open since the pandemic there has been a lot of backlog and uh, so now the visa interview slots they are not being uh, you know released that frequently 
so you're able to see at least the slots once in a week i think that is still uh, sufficient to go and grab the slots uh, so please note that for the visa interview there are uh, basically two days of interview one is the biometrics the other one is the counselor interview that means you have to basically book slots for two days either that could be uh, the adjacent days or there could be a gap of few days between the two slots now uh, please note that there are only five u.s consulates in india so you can choose any one of those five locations and appear for your visa interview uh, so we have also created a lot of content on the h1b uh, visa interview process questions and answers and the experiences similarly for h4 also so in case you have any queries please do um, check out all our videos and still if you have any questions then please comment in the comment section below and we will try our best to answer all your queries uh, so once you appear for your visa interview now uh, if a visa is approved uh, then the consular interviewer will take your passports and uh, keep it with himself or herself and your passports will be returned within next 7 to 14 working days but if in case they return your passport that means there is some issue and they might issue uh, you a blue or yellow slip which is uh, the 221g slip and there might be certain more evidences that they would require in in order to approve your visa so if in case you have appeared for your counselor interview and uh, your visa is approved you've also got your passports back with a visa stamp then you can plan your uh, accommodation and travel and the next step is to do the packing packing is a very daunting task but we have also created a video on the same you can uh, go and check out our packing video and and i hope our experience will surely help you in uh, packing the required things uh, so that's all for the h1b visa process in case you need any specific details on any one of the steps in this process then please do leave a comment below for this video that's all uh, so if you found this video helpful please do like and share the content and also do not forget to subscribe to our channel that would really keep us motivated so for this video uh, i'm signing off thank you so much for watching <music>